Hello, and welcome back to another edition of Easy Theory. So, there was a quite a bit of popularity with the recent video that I just did about another gate exam problem, so I figured let's do another one. So this one is about asking which of the following languages are undecidable. So we have language L1, which is the set of all Turing machines, so in all cases we have Turing machines, with empty language. The second one we have a machine, a string, and a state, and we are in L2 if the machine on that input reaches that particular state Q in exactly 100 transitions. L3 is a set of all Turing machines such that the language is not decidable, that machine's language is not decidable. And L4 is the set of all Turing machines that happen to accept at least 21 strings. So which of the following are undecidable? Pause the video and give a think about it. So what I'm going to do here is I would put the, the possible answers here, but I want to be able to understand why the answer is what it is. So I'm not going to actually put the four possible answers here. So let's actually think about this. So let's look at the first language. Well, that's the same thing as the language ETM, because the language ETM is the set of all Turing machines with empty language. And this is undecidable because you can show that this is undecidable via Rice's theorem. And we've done a video about what Rice's theorem is. And uh, therefore it's undecidable via Rice's theorem. You can also show it's undecidable in a number of different ways, such as assuming it were decidable and then producing a decider for ATM. And the way we did that was we had a machine that did one of two things. It either had empty language or had some other language, depending on whether M accepts W. So it's undecidable. So now let's look at the second one. Well, it says that that machine on a particular input W reaches a particular state Q. Well, this is decidable. So why is it decidable? That's the question we should always answer. Why is it decidable? Well, we could actually just simulate the machine for, at mo at, for exactly 100 transitions. So the answer really here is simulate M on W for 100 transitions. And then just look at the state that we ended up in. And if it's equal to the state Q that we were given, then we should accept, otherwise we should reject. And it's decidable because that machine always halts because it only takes 100 transitions to simulate. It may, the machine that we're doing to simulate it may take more than that, but since the input length is finite, then the total amount of time therefore is finite. So what about L3? Well, let's see. Could this be decidable or undecidable? It seems like we could prove that it's undecidable via Rice's theorem, and we actually can. So Rice's theorem shows this is undecidable, and why is that? So we would need to show that it's a property of Turing machine languages, and it certainly is. The only criterion for whether you're in or out the language depends on the language and not like the number of states you have or anything. So is it a non-trivial property? Well, yes it is, because we could have a machine M sub empty with the language of that machine being empty. Well then, that machine is not in L3 because the empty set is decidable. But now we need to find an example of a machine who has um, language that is not decidable. And the prototypical problem that's not decidable is ATM. So let's have a machine M with the language of that machine being ATM. And you may say, okay, well, that's not possible because ATM is undecidable. Yes, but it's recognizable. So therefore, uh, I can still make a machine that has that language. That's all that matters. The strings in the language are the only ones I need to halt on in general. 
So I don't require that the, the machine be a, uh, a decider for a particular, um, for having a particular language to show whether or not is it is in the uh, set L3. So I just need a Turing machine. I can have any old Turing machine I want. So M is in L3. And you can actually uh, amend this. So suppose that we had L3 prime, which is set of all machines such that L of M is not recognizable, then this one is decidable. Why is it decidable? Well, it's a, a property of Turing machine languages. Yep, it's, this, it's the same thing as L3 was, but look at what it says here. It is not recognizable. So the languages of all Turing machines, if you take all languages of all Turing machines, those are the recognizable languages. So if you're asking me to produce a Turing machine whose language is not recognizable, you're asking me to produce a, a Turing machine which has a language that can't be recognized by any Turing machine, which is impossible. So what would a decider do? Just reject on all inputs. So all, on all possible Turing machines you get, you just reject because every Turing machine's language is recognizable. So it's actually really important to distinguish between decidable and recognizable here. So L3 really is undecidable because we can produce a machine with, a non, with an undecidable language. And so what about L4? So L4 is, again, a property of Turing machine languages. It, the only criterion to be in there is dependent on the language. And if you happen to have the same language, then you either both have um, 21 strings or more or fewer. So it is a property of Turing machine languages, but is it non-trivial? And in this case, it is. So let's consider M sigma star. So that's the name of a machine that I have with the language of that guy being you guessed it, sigma star. So this implies that this machine is uh, in L4 because sigma star has more than 21 strings. And then if we take the same machine before M sub empty with L of that machine being empty, well, that is certainly less than 21 strings. So that means that M sub empty is not in L4. So by Rice's theorem, L4 is undecidable too. So the answer to this question is L1, L3, and L4. So I hope that was interesting. Leave a comment if you had a different answer or a different approach to proving this. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you like this content. And as always, I'll see you next time.